I am going to tell you how to get the best deal when buying an electric car in 2021. And no, it's not the same as buying a gas car in 2021. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you the differences and we're going to start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If you are interested in everything that's going on in a wonderful and amazing world of electric cars, or as we're going to call them very soon, cars, well, you came to the right place. Go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, before we dive right in, let me tell you about the biggest differences when you're buying a gas or a hybrid car versus buying an electric car. And the biggest difference is this. When you're buying a gas car, the only wiggle room really you have is in the price of the car or essentially what it comes down to the down payment and the monthly payments. But that's really the only thing you can negotiate because the other big expenses are gas and insurance. And there is not much of that wiggle room there at all. And those can actually be as big as your monthly payment or even more. So that's why when we're talking about getting a good deal on essentially monthly expenses for your car, we're just talking about the upfront cost of the car. But that's not the case with electric cars. With electric cars, you can actually save in quite many different ways and lower that monthly expense but a lot of those decisions you can make before your purchase. Now, I trust you that you guys all know how to get a good deal on a regular car because all of those tricks do apply to electric cars as well. After all, they are cars. So try to buy at the end of the month, hopefully not on a weekend because that's where dealers are trying to meet their monthly sales quotas and are willing to give you a better deal to sell that extra one or two cars before the month is over or if you can wait until the end of the model year which is september october and sometimes even november that's where the dealers are trying to clear out their lots so they can get the new year's models in manufacturers are throwing some cash incentives at you to get the great deals so take advantage of that and of course please shop at multiple dealers so you can get the best deal because the only way you know you'll get the best deal is because you know that you have passed in a lot of bad or average deals all right so now we got that out of the way let's talk about the specifics about getting the best deal when buying an electric car all right let's get to number one tip and i gotta tell you just with this one tip if you just stop watching a video right now i bet you can easily save at least a thousand dollars on any electric car you're going to be buying and the tip is this buy your electric car where electric cars are still not very popular. So let me give you an example. When I lived in Silicon Valley and I was shopping for a Mercedes-Benz, last dealership I was going to visit was the one called Smythe European. It was and still is really located on the main street of the main city of Silicon Valley, San Jose, California, where all these dot-com millionaires and billionaires would come in and just buy one for cash at MSRP that was not a dealership that was going to give me a good deal instead i would reach out to a mercedes-benz dealership in sacramento where i live now but at that time it was two hours away where it's not that easy and really never was that easy to sell a mercedes-benz so these dealers work much harder and therefore are willing to give me a better deal and these sacramento dealerships were able to afford it because they didn't have to pay as much for their bottom line the rent here is cheaper the wages here are cheaper so everybody won and the same thing goes for buying electric cars don't buy electric cars where they are popular like silicon valley try to reach out to dealerships in the area where electric cars are not that popular like sacramento here people don't buy electric cars as much and it is easier to get a deal and in many cases they will deliver a car to you for free all right before i get to my second tip a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by xpong motors check out the p7 a beautiful electric sedan i just got to enjoy myself the other week it is equipped with the x pilot 3.0 self-driving tech with navigation guided autonomous driving feature and even some cool games you can watch my full review on this channel and also check out xpong motors on facebook both links are down below my number two tip is that you lease your electric car now generally i suggest that people lease their new cars anyway it is much cheaper i've made plenty of videos about that now there are a couple of exceptions for example if you drive more than 25,000 miles per year 
leasing is probably not for you or if you like to keep your cars forever and ever and ever and see which one of you dies first again the lease is not for you but for everybody else i suggest you lease a car drive it for three years and then uh, get rid of it before the warranty expires but when you buy an electric car well then i strongly strongly for reals suggest that you lease because you do get a federal tax credit of $7,500 on most electric cars here in the United States. Now, the exceptions are Tesla and GM, but that may change depending on what kind of bill the Congress is or isn't going to pass. But the thing is, is not everybody qualifies for that $7,500 tax credit. Or even if you do, you may have to wait up until a year from the purchase of your car to get that money back. But when you lease an electric car, it's your leasing bank that will be claiming the tax credit. And regardless of whether or not you qualify, one, you will get it pretty much instantly because they will be passing those savings to you right away. And secondly, even if you wouldn't qualify for it, you're still going to get it from your leasing bank. My number three tip is this reshop your insurance company because everyone's got kind of comfortable with their insurance company or at least the box that you're in with your insurance companies because you know if you're going to go with someone like farmers you end up paying a little bit more if you're going to end up with geico you'll pay a little bit less because you know obviously when you hire reptiles or your spokespeople you know you can pay way less money than to a real celebrity for example i do have farmers i know i'm paying a little bit more but i like having my own agent i've been with her for 20 years it's really a long-term monogamous relationship at this point uh, and i know i can save some money with geico but you know i want to make sure that the company pays out fast and with no problems and farmers has always done for me but if my priority was to save money then definitely geico would have been my number one choice but at the end of the day i know that it's going to be a certain small range of pricing that my particular car is going to fit in and of course it all depends on my driving record age and so forth and so forth but with electric cars it's a little different especially right now because not all insurance companies have figured out how to calculate rates for electric cars especially for the particular models that are just coming out or even particular brands that are just coming out so the range of the quotes that you can get on the same electric car can be quite large so shop as much as you can through as many insurance companies as you can no matter how much in love you are with your insurance agent those pretty eyes ain't worth it man so much like with insurance companies where you can definitely lower your monthly expenses on your electric car the same goes with refueling and since most of the refueling the charging happens at home all of a sudden your electric utility company becomes very important it's kind of like one of your co-workers that you never really talked to until you realize that her boyfriend works at your favorite club now if you do have a choice between different electric utility companies definitely compare rates but most importantly the one that you choose or you're stuck with like we are here in california check out if that electric utility company has the specific rates where it's cheaper to charge at night because unless you're working a night shift at 7-eleven uh, you're probably going to end up charging your car at night and if the rates are much lower that's how you can save yourself a lot of money it's not uncommon for a household with one or two electric cars to spend as much money on charging their electric cars as they spend for the rest of their electric bill which brings me to solar and of course i can make a very long video about it just on its own but generally speaking a lot of solar companies right now will offer you a deal where you will have to put nothing down to get the solar panels on your house and your monthly payments to pay off that system will still be less than what you're paying for your electric bill currently normally it's a lot of hassle to lower your bill by 20 or 30 dollars but if you are going to charge your electric car or your electric cars and therefore up your bill by about a hundred extra dollars then it may actually make sense or as an alternative uh, there are companies that are starting to sell solar generators where you can create your own little solar farm just to charge your electric car or some of them even make solar canopies for your car okay my number five tip still has to do with charging because some electric cars do come with either unlimited fast charging at networks like electrify america here in the united states or with a limited amount of 
kilowatts that you can jam into your car for free before you have to start paying. So the choice of your electric car will also affect how much money you're going to be spending on charging. And to continue on topic of free charging, because I got to tell you, charging does cost a pretty penny. Sometimes you can add up to $100 a month just to charge your car. So free charging is important. So if you have free charging offered at your office, at your work, do take advantage of that. Now, it could be as easy as simply asking if there is a charger that you never knew because you never cared somewhere on campus that can charge your car for free or some employers will install free charging on their campuses per request of their employees if there are enough of you. And number six, I'm using two hands now. My number six tip is to find out and qualify for your local electric car incentives. Unlike the federal tax credit, a lot of times you don't have to qualify for the local incentives. All you have to do is really have a pulse. Yep, there's $2,500 right there. Now, different states and different governments implement those very differently. So make sure that you research your local incentives. Sometimes they expire. So you want to make sure to get your car before that. Or sometimes they implement new ones. And therefore, you want to wait for those. Now, unfortunately, some of those incentives depend on how much money you are making. And if they believe you're making way too much money, uh, you're not qualified. So I'm not saying anything, but I'm just going to leave this information here and you guys do whatever you want with it. So as you can see, a lot of my tips have nothing to do with negotiating the price of your electric car. It's about maybe adjusting and negotiating some parts of your life that have nothing to do with the car itself, but has to do with your utility company or your local government. And that's how you can actually get a good deal because at the end of the day, you only care about how much money you're going to be spending on your car every month. Go ahead, use my tips and save some money. And when you do, don't forget that this channel does offer premium memberships. For less than $5 a month, you can provide food, shelter, and electricity to charge this YouTuber's electric car. But you do get a lot of cool things for it. I post exclusive interviews, exclusive videos, behind the scene materials, and a lot of other fun stuff specifically for you guys supporting my channel, all right? Looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.